<laughs> now the we cherry need blossom a, Now we need a budget. <laughs> we need a budget. <laughs> that would be great. Hands in, arms in. <laughs> <laughs> Paintings and Trees! I'm here with the three curators. Yay! Linnea Pascal, Ben Pritchard, and Ben LaRocco. And we're here in a beautiful place with almost over 120 artists who've installed their work, whether the curators installed it or the artists did, in trees. Um, so we're here to talk about that and about the party that's going to happen this weekend. Um, so, how did this come about? We should say that the exhibition is a benefit to the garden. That's so the this is a benefit. About it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that it came about, in addition to all the social aspects, it came about in order to try to do something to give something back to a garden that has given us a great deal, it's given us a place to come and be in at least a little bit of nature, which is hard to find in Bushwick, um, and in a, in, a, in, a, in a social environment that's welcoming. Oh, that's great. So you're going to make some money. Okay. Everyone has to come the to the garden, party. For the garden, yes. To come. Yeah. The, great. And um, it's just so beautiful. I mean, I, I could spend at least two or three hours walking around and looking at everything, which I hope to do this weekend. Um, and how did you guys decide to come up with this project and go for it? Well, first was just spending a lot of time here, coming here with our son Castle, who's three and a half, and we needed a green space, somewhere where you could play in the dirt. Um, I grew up in rural America, and you know my son was just playing on concrete, so I brought him here. There was ducks, there's chickens, there's places for him to dig and play with trucks and so we were coming here regularly and spending hours here so I got to know Hector and Hernan, the gardeners and the keepers of this beautiful place and Robert and so it became a kind of home for us. That's great. And then we have this idea, right, about painting some trees and we all have this different uh, approach to that and background relationship yeah. to it. Um, so you, you've got you got the Van Gogh thing. Yeah. <laughs> the Van Gogh. Tell the Van Gogh story. Tell the Van Gogh story. <laughs> well, well, it was actually after the fact when this show had already happened. I was sort of retracing my steps, like, where did that idea come from? And um, yeah, I kind of went through my memory banks and realized that um, I'd read a passage from a Van Gogh, probably his notes at some time, you know, way back when I was just, I don't even remember when. And um, he was talking about putting his paintings in the environment and how it was important to see his, his paintings in the environment to see if they compared to the natural world. And then I took that idea um, literally one time when I was visiting my folks and I had a bunch of work just sitting up in the attic. I took it down and installed it in the, in the backyard of my folks' house um, in the dead of winter. So it was, everything was covered in snow and I just, I realized at that moment that, that the best home for my work as far as I can tell at that time, was in, you know, a, like a forested environment, not in a linear white box environment. So then through conversation with Ben and Linnea, uh, you know, just hanging out, talking about all things, uh, you know, bringing, bringing the inner mind into the world, out in the way, whether that's through making paintings, through music writing, whatever, um, this idea of like installing a show is going to emerge naturally. And, and another thing I love about this is it's it's kind of hard to judge a painting. Is it good? Is it bad? Does it have too much blue when it's surrounded by greener? When it's upside down? When it's at an angle? You know, it really takes that. It changes that. the criteria. It changes the criteria. And it, it becomes all these beautiful gems outside of that. Well, did the brush mark look good? Or, so I love that fresh. You know, something you said makes total sense to me, which is I never thought of prior things that I'd done that led to curating and being involved with this, but it was, as you said, once we did this, all of these past experiences started to come back, like when I started painting myself, I, I was a plein air landscape painter, so I spent all that time outside looking at painting outside, you know, all that experience of looking at um, self-taught artists, that plays into this, so all these things, I realized subsequently looking after beginning this project, yeah. that I'd been involved with all of, of all of it for a while. So it's just really nice to kind of deconstruct the whole, like we're all here in New York, what are we doing, you know, we have this community. 
Train. <laughs> J-Train, how'd you go stop? J-Train will get you here fast. <laughs> just just uh, sort of re-examining the whole construct of what we're doing as artists in, in New York yeah, City, yeah. you know, and it's I like, like that. um, I, that's a big element of what, what I, I think not just us, but the whole kind of larger Bushwick community is engaged in that idea of, uh, and, and so the, the response to us sort of developing this idea, which we had, you know, it was a very small idea initially, it kind of exploded. People wanted to be involved. People that you wouldn't think would want to have their work outside for a month, work existing in time, um, being, you know, we've had a lot of weather affect the work. Um, things have held up amazingly well, actually, but um, you wouldn't think a lot of people would be, engaged, you know, open for that idea. Um, works that are essentially made for white you know, interior. I love doing. the reactions to people who come in, they say, well, is the art only over here, or is it, you know, what's this, you know, where are you hanging, how right, high? Right, right, right. Well, and then also the artists were like, how wet will my painting be, could it be stolen, you know, it's like, and we're like yes. interesting. <laughs> Both the artist and the Nothing's viewer. Nothing's been stolen. Right. <laughs> the nature overwhelms everything. I mean, there's over a hundred artworks in here. Well over a hundred, fifty. And you still sort of get the sense that something's going on, but you can also miss it. That's right. You know, That's right. The, the garden itself is such a beautiful environment. It absorbs, um, it absorbs a lot into it. And when you itself. initially said 120 artists, I thought, that's too many. How are we going to fit? And now it's, we, yeah. can, we can fit more. We can fit double yeah. that. It's amazing. And the, the idea of curating as we installed it, it, you had to like lose your whole paradigm of the box, you know, where you're coming in and seeing work on walls or sculpture in the center. It becomes this right. kind of unfolding, you don't shifting need a level. space. Yes. You don't you need, don't a, need level. a level. You don't need a level. Level, level does not help. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's totally useless to it. <laughs> what angle is that branch? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. That's great. And we have two pieces that we can see behind us. And whose work is this back here? It's Evelina Bochinski, I believe. Um, and yeah, she is a Polish artist. Um, she's just starting at the New York Studio School next year. Wow. Um, she's a pretty ambitious artist. That's great. And this blue, we can see too. That's um, uh, Joy, Joy Walker. Yeah. Uh, Joy Walker? Yeah. Joy, not Joy Walker. Polish. Joy oh. Curtis. Joy, Joy Curtis. Curtis. Joy Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> it takes three curators to get it all straight. <laughs> we got Ben Morocco right here. That's my, that's my A Dave Shul over there. A Dave, Dave Shul. Back here. Dave Shul. And who's um, for the party that's happening this weekend, which is a, like a fundraiser slash party, yes. right? Yes. Who's, um, you have a list of people. Oh, yeah. Saturday the 20th, music in the leaves, poetry on the grass, movies on walls and paintings in trees. We got uh, Jeremy Sigler reading poetry, Mark McKelly playing music, Colin O'Conn and Dark Carpet playing music, Michael Perrone will be doing some projections after dark, Daniel Clagg will be performing, Dan Goldberg will be performing, Veronica Torres will be performing, Mr. Frank from Terminal Intrusion will be performing, and Dave Shule. Big thanks to him for helping organize this. Dave Shule and the Seashells will be performing. All right, so come on out, check it out. Woo! Starting at three. At three. Going all day. All day. All, all night. All, all night, night long. long. Yeah. All right. All right Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you. Melissa. All right.